I have to share something. Um, I can video myself, though. Um, I kept in touch with Susie almost every day the last few months before she passed away. And if you knew her, you knew she didn't like to talk about religion. She just didn't. So I didn't know what her beliefs were. I didn't, I didn't know. But it was a concern as we knew the end was to come. And I got up the morning after she passed away and, and my heart sank because I knew she was gone. And then I went about my business. And when I was in the kitchen starting to make coffee, I said, oh, I have to call Susie. And then I remembered that she, she wasn't there. And I felt the strongest sense. It was like a sparkly feeling. And I knew it was her. And I just turned and looked to where it seemed like it was emanating from and said, see, there is an afterlife yet. And she, it, you, I could almost hear her laugh in the way she went. And it, it brought me a lot of peace. And I hope that peace is with you all too. I'd like to reiterate what Anne said about Susie. She was a very good friend of mine for many, many years. And there would be periods of time where we didn't have contact. And then a phone call would come out of the blue or vice versa. And it was always just like she was still here and had never left and never moved away. And our connection just always maintained itself um, through thick and thin and through vast periods of time. She would come and stay when she did visit Countersport here at the farm. Or when I was in Port Allegheny, she came there as well and uh, stayed. And uh, anyway, she was just a very good friend and, and was someone that I looked up to so much. She was so strong and, and free-spirited, yes. <laughs> as you say. Um, it was just been a pleasure and a joy to know her and have her as my friend. She was always there when I needed her, and I hope I was there for her too. Um, but just a beautiful, beautiful person. And I'll miss her dearly. Susie, when she would come to visit, it was always around Christmas time, sometimes in the summer, and we have a quarry nearby. And she, just as easily as she would come in and out of your community, she would come into ours, and our friends were her friends. And she would just get right out. She'd go over and visit Dennis Sparling, just like that, to see what he was up to, what he was making, what he, she was always interested in anything creative going on. She was a wonderful cook, and I can't tell you how many times she just walked right into the kitchen. Everything that was going on in, in our lives, she would just fill right in, and it was always delicious. And I now, um, I think of her a lot, as a lot of what she has given us and passed on is all around us. And so I, I wanted to say, make a prayer, read a prayer for all of us to her. I am going to read it. <laughs> and it's a Jewish prayer, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Susie, as you journey on the road, you are walking, and we stand here, all of us together. We gather here to say, each in our own way, in the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember you. And in the blowing of the wind, and in the chill of winter, we remember, remember you. In the opening of buds, and in the rebirth of spring, we remember you. In the blueness of the sky, and in the warmth of summer, we remember you. And in the rustling of the leaves, and in the beauty of autumn, 
I remember you. And in the beginning of the year, and when it ends, we remember you. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember you. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember you. And when we have joys, we yearn to share, we remember you. And when we have a song that longs to be sung, we remember you. So long as we live, you will live, for you are now part of us as we remember you. We do not abandon you. Please remember us. I hope you've reached the shore where all of the last happy an ancestors are greeting you today. <laughs> <coughs> I have a feeling my father-in-law would like to say a word about Susie. I'm sure he's got a story. People are sharing um, things about Susie. Good bro. <laughs> <laughs> See you. <laughs> you want me to say something? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody's saying stuff. Well, Sally was okay. She Susie. had a great sense of humor. She was a good friend. She wrote pretty good, too. Uh, she played pretty good bridge. Uh, I, don't, I don't know whether I could add anything else or not, but it's a pleasure to be here. We just came from Kingston, New York, and just made it. Nice to see you. I, I do want to say one more thing, which really has... The, one other thing that just keeps going back and forth, going around in me right now is just the love that the, these two had for each other it really always struck me. And they were always there for each other. And as Michael says, and I think of this a lot, that they, they relied on each other and they were there for each other the whole time. And, um, and I just... Remember, I mean, who would come and play Scrabble every, you know, every every visit, you know? Not me. <laughs> and that was their thing. I was never involved. That was their game, and I just, um, I've, I've always been very moved by their relationship. Anybody else <laughs> have any words about short, sweet, long, long, crazy? When Andy and I first started dating, he said, I want to take you down to Countersport to meet my mom. They do this bear hunt every year. They have these cutouts of plywood bears, yeah. and they put them in the woods, and you get up at 5 a.m., and you go in the back of the van, and you ride around to all the state parks, and you go up the trails, and you look for the bears. Okay, sounds great. And my mom's friend, Sally, lives up in the corner of the state, and there's a little state park area there. And they always have one at the end of the trail. Okay. So we're going to get up at like 4.30 in the morning, and we're going to get in the van, and we're going to drive up to Sally's place, and we're going to go down that trail, and we're going to get the one bear. And then we'll drive around and find a few others and whatever. Well, we get to the, to the trail down by Sally's house. There's no bear there, but oh, yeah, you know what? There's going to be bears. I swear it. So we spent the whole day in the back of the van driving around on these windy roads looking for bears. Never a bear to be found. And to this day, I don't know if it's really. Is it really <laughs> something that's legitimate or is just this big joke that was played on? We, we won the bear thing the one year. Did you? Yeah. It must not have been the year that you guys were with Obviously. us. <laughs> We found, we found like five bears the one time and we all got t-shirts and we won the contest. But Susie